Now let's move on to talk about the efficiency of separation and the efficiency of our chromatographic column. So uh, when you have different components, we need to find um, or calculate how efficient is this column uh, or this chromatographic technique in separating the different components. And there are uh, two factors that contribute to how well components are separated by chromatography. The first one is the difference in the elution time. Of course, we want our component to come out of the column at a different time. And the second thing is the how broad are the uh, peaks. So um, as the, um, uh, the different components are coming out of the column, they will distribute themselves in the same shape as the uh, Gaussian uh, shape, or it will also have the Gaussian distribution with a mean and standard deviation. And uh, then to uh, calculate the efficiency of separation, we need to know that if your um, compound or if your solute is retained for uh, a longer uh, time on the column, then the, um, the band as it comes out from the column will be broader. And to calculate the broadness of this band or of the peak, there are two methods for this. The first one is the width at the half height of our uh, Gaussian distribution curve. The second one is the, uh, um, the width at the baseline. And we are, when we are talking about the width as a baseline, we have to calculate it between the tangents drawn at the steepest part of the peak. So these two tangents here are the ones that are taken into account, and this will be the width of our uh, um, of our peak. Now the uh, there's something called the column uh, column resolution. And the column resolution tell us how far apart the two bands are separated from each other when we have two uh, components uh, that come out of the column at different points or at different uh, speeds or at different times. And it's a measure of the ability of our column to separate the two solutes. In chromatography, we can calculate this resolution in different ways. The first one is by using the retention time and the width of our peak. So the um, uh, the average width of the two uh, peaks. So um, the first one is to calculate the difference in the retention time of the two uh, peaks and then the average width of the two peaks and we divide these by each other and then we will get the resolution or we can also use a different term when we use the um, retention volume rather than the retention time so we also calculate the difference in the retention volume divided by the average width of the two uh, peaks the third method um, uses the width at the half uh, height, and again, we use the average width at half height for both peaks, and um, then uh, we um, divide 0 0.589 times the uh, difference in the retention time uh, by the width at half height. So these are the three uh, different methods to uh, calculate the resolution of uh, your um, the resolution of your uh, peaks. Of course, the higher the resolution, the better the separation between the different components. Um, one of the reasons why we see the um, uh, band spreading or, um, or in the column is the diffusion, because actually your solutes, as they are retained on the column and as they moving through the column, uh, they move through the column uh, with diffusion. And diffusion simply, as you all know, is um, the movement of the particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So as they are moving, this will cause this spreading and will cause the witness of um, uh, of your uh, peak or um, this is why your peaks will take the form of the um, the shape of the uh, will take the Gaussian form as they come out of the column. 
Uh, another important thing we need to calculate here and that affects the separation of our different component is the efficiency of our chromatographic column. So the efficiency of the chromatographic column is described in, term, in, in terms uh, of uh, either the number of theoretical plates or the plate height or height, we call this height equivalent to theoretical, uh, height equivalent of a theoretical plate, H-E-T-P. So normally you have one column, but as the separation takes place on the column, we uh, consider this column as uh, composed of different plates attached to each other. And the, um, the higher the number of these, um, um, the higher the number of these theoretical plates, the better the separation uh, and the better the efficiency of our chromatographic column and vice versa. So uh, the smaller uh, the value of the height of that theoretical plate, that means we have a high number of theoretical plates and that means that it's better separation. So we either need a small, a high number of um, high number of theoretical plate or a very small value uh, of height for the uh, uh, the plate uh, height or the height equivalent of the theoretical plate the um, uh, the um, the number of theoretical plate for different columns will vary from a few hundreds to up to several hundred thousands while the plate height can also vary from few millimeters to few tons of micrometers so you can have a very very small height of these plates and to calculate the number of theoretical plate uh, of this column this will vary depending on the, um, uh, the so it's not something that is fixed for the column this is something you can calculate separately uh, based on your uh, solutes or based on your sample and the solvent or the mobile phase you use. Uh, and this helps us to determine which um, uh, exactly which uh, column is the best for separation of our components. So these values are not fixed for the column, but they vary depending on the type of the uh, our sample or the different compounds we need to separate. So uh, the number of theoretical plates can be obtained directly from the chromatogram. So the number of theoretical plates will equal 16 times the retention time divided by the width of your, um, uh, your chromatogram or your beak. So the width and the uh, retention time, and this is um, uh, squared. So you can calculate the number of theoretical plates of your um, the, the number of theoretical plate of your column based on the, uh, these values. And of course, to calculate the height equivalent to the theoretical plate, then you need just to divide the length of your um, column divided by the number of theoretical plate. So um, let's see an example how to calculate the efficiency of our chromatographic column. So if you have a chromatographic peak, that was fine to have a retention time of 52 seconds. So this is your retention time. And the base width of the beak is equivalent to 3.2 seconds. Of course, the width here is um, described in terms of time because here we are talking about retention time. We are not talking about the width in terms of how many centimeters or a length value, but in um, time. So the uh, width of the beak is equivalent to 3.2 seconds. Um, and uh, then the, um, the length of the column in total is 50 centimeters. So we need to calculate <coughs> the height uh, equivalent of theoretical plate in terms of centimeter of plate. Now uh, we need first to calculate the number of theoretical plate and the number of theoretical plate, as we said, will equal 16 times uh, TR divided by W squared. And then we calculate the height equivalent to theoretical plate and the height of the, the equivalent to theoretical plate uh, will equal the length uh, of the plate, uh, of the uh, column divided by the number of theoretical plate. So in here will equal 16 times 52, which is the retention time divided by the width, which is 3.2 uh, second squared, 
which will equal 5,225. That means that we have four, um, uh, the number of theoretical plates for this column, for this particular um, compound, equals 4,225 plates. And then the height will equal 50, which is 50 centimeter, divided by 4,225 will equal 0 0.01 centimeter per plate. So um, you have, when you do your calculation, you have to see exactly what terms of uh, height I'm looking for. Do I, uh, am I looking for this as centimeter per plate, or am I looking for that as millimeter per plate or micrometer per plate? So you have to be careful when you do your calculation, um, and um, you have to look carefully um, what is the length of the column. Is it in centimeter or millimeter or what the value I'm giving you in the 